Segmentation fault, or in short, segfault, occurs when a program attempts to access a memory location that it is not allowed to access, or in a way that it is not allowed. Almost all C programmers have encountered segfaults before, and it is usually really frustrating if you've been coding this program for a few hours. In this video, you will know 5 ways to call segfaults and how to fix each one of them. The first and most common one is dereferencing a null pointer. In this code, there is a function called setValue, which will dereference a pointer and give it a value. But in the main function, you pass in a null pointer, which calls a segfault. Address 0, to which a null pointer refers, is usually marked as inaccessible to any program, because accessing it would have no meaningful or defined behavior. To fix this, always check the pointer's value before dereferencing it, if it's possible to be a null pointer. Next up, we have dereferencing an uninitialized pointer or free pointer. For an uninitialized pointer, since it contains random garbage value, dereferencing it will have the possibility of accessing the memory location that you don't have the right to access. To avoid this, initialize the pointer and declaration whenever is possible. For a pointer that is freed, the ownership of that memory location is given back to the operating system. So any read or write operation on that memory address will cause undefined behavior. You may see some cases that accessing to a free pointer doesn't crash, and even works fine. But this is actually an undefined behavior, and may cause unknown error to a program as well. To have an extra memory error detector in development, enable the address sanitizer by adding the dash fsanitize equals to address flag when you compile a program. Also, add the dash g flag to include debugging information in the executable file. Next, let's take a look on writing to read-only memory. In this code, I'm trying to change the 8th character in a string literal to another character. Since a string literal is read-only, so doing this operation will cause a segfault. To avoid this, use pointer to a string literal when you know that you're only gonna read from the string. Whenever you are possibly going to modify the string, use this syntax so that the compiler will make a copy of the string literal and store it into a writable array, instead of pointing directly to the read-only string literal. The next category is buffer overflow, an anomaly whereby a program writes data to a buffer beyond the buffer's allocated memory. In this code, I have a buffer of size 6, and then I'm writing a string of size 10 including the null terminator, which triggers a segfault. To avoid this, use a bigger or dynamically allocated buffer, or use smprintf over sprintf to specify the maximum size of the buffer. Some similar cases of using an alternative function to make it safer includes using strin copy over str copy, strin cat over str cat, fgets over gets, and more. Lastly, we will wrap up with stack overflow. It occurs if the call stack pointer exceeds the stack bound means you call too many functions. This usually happens when you have a recursive function that just went too deep, or honestly, in most cases, when you forget to add a termination condition for the recursive function. In this code, the recursion will just go forever until your machine has no memory left for the call stack, which will also trigger a segfault when you run it. To avoid this, always remember to have a base case or termination case for your recursive function. That's all for this video, if you liked it, please like and subscribe, I will see you in the next one.